But kidnap victim Hannah Anderson has been through hell. Her mother and brother Ethan, dead. She goes through hell as she's kidnapped by Jim DiMaggio. So we're waiting to hear more details when she's ready to tell her story. And she's telling part of her story and doing it on social media. That's what the 16-year-old has chosen to do. Now, we have independently verified that the posts on the site, Ask FM, are indeed from Hannah herself. With more, here's Casey Wine. 16-year-old Hannah Anderson is sharing details about her kidnapping on social media. She fielded questions on the site Ask FM about her abduction by the man she knew as Uncle Jim, James DiMaggio. A user asked, did you want to go with DiMaggio? She replied, no, not at all. Why didn't you run? He would have killed me. Why didn't you tell your parents he creeped you out? In part, he was my dad's best friend, and I didn't want to ruin anything between them. Hannah shed new light on the night she was kidnapped, the same night her mother and younger brother were murdered, their bodies burned in DiMaggio's house. How did he separate you from your mom and brother? He tied them up in the garage. How did he keep the fire a secret? He had it set where it would catch on fire at a certain time. Hannah also wrote DiMaggio threatened to kill her if she fled and brought her at least in part to help carry equipment in the wilderness. Some questions from subscribers were brutally blunt. Did he rape you? I'm not allowed to talk about it, so don't ask questions about it. Thank you. Are you glad he's dead? Absolutely. Some experts question the wisdom of Hannah's online chats. This is a 16-year-old who's totally traumatized. She is in a state of trauma, and so she's not thinking. Sometimes in a numb state, you're doing things that you don't really, really consider the consequences. Hannah even posted a selfie and engaged in lighter conversation, typical of a teenage girl, but even some of that seemed painful. What design did you get on your nails? Pink for my mom and blue for Ethan. Those who know her tell CNN Hannah spent some of Tuesday helping to plan their funerals. So much for a 16-year-old to have to deal with. I want to bring in psychologist uh, Dr. Judy Ho. Judy, you know, I think some people go, wow, that's the way she's going to open up online. But again, that's the new generation, right? You know, we as the news media, we'd love to talk to her. But no, she's going social media. Do you think that's healthy? Is that a good way to go for her? Well, Mike, you know, I think she's using the coping skill that's comfortable for her and at her disposal. And as you just mentioned in our new generation, you know, I see kids coming into my therapy office, four and five years old, playing on their iPads, you know, so they're kind of used to this, this type of technology. I don't know if that's the smartest choice, though, but Hannah's really grasping at straws. I really think she needs professional intervention as soon as possible. Hmm. She's trying to process this, trying to get the story out, and this is maybe her only avenue that she can think of right now in her teenage mind. What would you advise her? I mean, is she, she's, if she came to you and said, Judy, I know I've been through a lot. I need to get some of this out. I'm going to go on social media. Would you give her the okay? Would you advise against? Well, you know, we try not to tell our clients what to do directly. We want them to come up with it themselves. But mm. I would strongly start to question her in a way that gets her to examine, you know, what are the repercussions of coming out with such a personal traumatizing story on social media. Not everyone's going to be respectful, as we yeah. just saw in the clip. Somebody asked her straight up if she was raped. You know, these are the kinds of things that she's going to have to deal with. And then it's out there forever. You know, it's kind of imprinted on the Internet and other people can redistribute it. So I would try to bring up some of those issues with her, ask her if there's any other trusted individual she can talk to about this instead of using social media. She may feel more comfortable talking by email or chat, and right. that's okay, but not Seems publicly. It. Okay. Judy, hey, th thanks again. Coming up, you know, the three teen teenagers, you see the video of them beating up a classmate on the bus. Some of Tuesday, helping to plan their funerals. But again, it is fascinating. Back with us, a member of our psych squad, uh, Dr. Judy Ho, clinical psychologist specializing in family therapy. What is your reaction to Hannah telling her story on social media, good or bad? Mike, I think overall it's bad, although this is really the only thing that she can think of, you know, instead of going to proper channels, she's really just using the very easy tool at her disposal, which she, she and her whole generation have been used to. But I think it, it puts her up against so much more scrutiny this way, you know, there's you can't control what people are going to post to you, mm -hmm. what questions they're going to ask. And I don't really think it's a very healthy way of processing all of this information. I do agree that it needs to be processed. She needs to talk about it. Right. But I don't think this is the best way. Yeah. You know, on one hand, you and I talked about it. That's the generation. I mean, kids her age, very comfortable social media online. That You know, they're ready to talk on that 
for, but, but you point out the, the danger of that, some of the questions that might come her way. Let, let's talk about how therapeutic it is, though, for her to just tell her story. Does that help in the healing, or is it different with different people? I think it absolutely helps with the healing, Mike. I think, yes, dependent on the person, maybe it helps a little more, a little less, but the information does need to come out somehow. I think sometimes when individuals are traumatized, they tend to shy away from the topic, they try to avoid, but then they start to engage in other types of behaviors too. As a result of that, sometimes people get into drugs, they get into dangerous behavior because they're not really unearthing all of the trauma that's there. And so I think it's important that she talks about it and anybody who's been through trauma needs to process it but the way again that she chose right. is really not the best way and can subject her to further trauma yeah well we wish you the best and hopefully in a roundabout way this yeah. does help at the end of the day judy great job again teeing up the psych squad Thanks. for us we've been talking about the drama playing out with michael jackson's former